Etsy is busy, uh, like many other organizations, creating uh, a best practices document. And they wanted to include uh, Soho. They're mostly focused on enterprise, but they, I said, that's not where I'm, I'm living these days. I'm living in the Soho market. So, uh, so they said, for sure, create something. So this is a very much a living document. I'm looking for feedback um, today and follow on and you can reach me at my email there. So moving on, so IPv6 support for CPE. Uh, it's been mentioned earlier already today that uh, there is some IPv6 support in, in home routers, uh, but it's certainly far from complete. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that uh, SOHO networks tend to grow organically into very complex networks or complex for a, for a home network anyway. And that IPv6 support like security should not be an add-on just tacked onto the, the, the bolted onto the side, but should be baked in from the beginning. And I'll, I'll talk to how we can do that more easily going forward. So here's an example of a, of a SOHO network that started as a really simple network. Uh, if you can see my pointer, it started with this production thing I'm calling a production router and a production network. Single router home network, very, very common. And then for whatever the business grows, it decides it needs to provide services out to the internet. So it creates a DMZ, uh, possibly doing VPN, say over WireGuard. It's running Linux containers. Um, a little bit later, they say, hey, IPv6 only, that's, that's kind of the end goal after all. So let me stand up an IPv6 only network to make sure that my applications work with IPv6 only and find out what else is broken out there in the internet. Um, and they create a test network just because, because I'm a geek and I did. Um, so these networks can become rather complex even in a small office home office environment. So where's a good start to look at how to create an IPv6 enabled CPE or home router? Well, the IETF is always a good place to start. And uh, here I've listed some RFCs, the basic requirements, uh, home net architecture, which is very interesting, worth looking at. Um, the most recent uh, or a more recent RFC, 9099, is operational security cons considerations, uh, specifically uh, section 3.8 for general device hardening, and also transition technologies, um, such as uh, MAP-T or MAP-E, uh, it would be really good if the CPE supported this. Uh, Sky is busy deploying MAP-T in Italy right now, even as we speak. But not covered just in the RFCs are some additional wish list of items I thought are worth considering. And one is if HomeNet protocol is not supported because HomeNet does, its, it does a pretty good job of avoiding loops and so forth in a, in a, a small, multi-router network. If that's not supported, then some simple routing protocol such as RIPNG should be supported. RIPNG is not a perfect routing protocol, but what it is, is it's a plug and play protocol. Not everybody in the Soho environment understands all the different types of LSAs for OSPF and how, how to, to implement OSPF or ISIS for that matter, but plugging and play, they understand that. And downstream IPv6 PD support is incredibly important. As you saw earlier, as the home network or the small office network grows, additional routers are added. How do those additional routers get address space for their downstream networks? They can, they're gonna do it through prefix delegation. Again, a plug and play concept. There's a lot of home routers out there that will do PD upstream, but not PD downstream. Some additional wish list items are auto naming support. It was mentioned earlier today that, that the age of memorizing IP addresses is really coming to an end. It was actually phrased differently that IP v6 addresses are hard to type, but using DNS and leveraging DNS to, and to get to devices on your own network 
as well as out on the internet is going to be very, very important in an IPv6 deployment. And also deploying sane firewall rules. It's very common for home routers to basically block ICMP. This doesn't work in ICMP v6, or it doesn't work in v6 because of ICMP v6 neighbor discovery is a ICMP v6 message. And therefore, if you are concerned that it's going to be a problem by allowing IPv6, ICMP v6 into your network, well, then rate limit it. But keep your firewall rules sane. Don't have zero firewall rules for v6 and lots of fire rules, firewall rules for v4. And lastly, wireless mesh support. If you look at any home router vendor these days, they have a, v a wireless mesh offering. So in my opinion, the Soho router should be able to enable the standard. And there is a wireless mesh standard. It's 802.11s. It's been around for about 10 years, which includes hybrid wireless mesh protocol, which handles loop uh, prevention. And lastly, Wi-Fi calling. As we are working more from home, uh, we are using our handsets more at home, not wanting to necessarily use our, our cellular minutes. And so we can use Wi-Fi calling and the CPE should be able to have default rules that support that. So I mentioned earlier about not being an add-on, but rather baked in. Um, IPv6 support for CPEs. And a key way to do that is to leverage open source software that's already been written. Yes, it it's, might have a GPL license associated with it. So you might have to publish it, the GPL code, but it will jumpstart your support of a CPE, IPv6 enabled CPE. OpenWRT is a project I've been involved with for about 15 years now and has excellent IPv6 support. And pretty much everything on my wish list, uh, including the RFCs, are implemented in OpenWRT. Commercial vendors such as GLINet and Cuddy already include OpenWRT as the base of their product. And then they put a different web interface on top. That's their value add. Uh, open source accelerates your product to market time. So in summary, the CPE, the home router must act as a standalone gateway when it's just a very simple network, but it also must act in concert with other IPv6 enabled routers that are downstream, hence the prefix delegation requirement. It must be ready to support IPv6 only. And the reason is because IPv6 only is the end goal. We don't want to run dual stack for the next 100 years. It's more work and more trouble. It must be ready to grow as the network grows. And understanding that the person who is deploying these multiple routers in a SOHO environment is not a network expert. And features such as auto addressing and auto name service are key to the deploy and go mindset in the SOHO environment. This wish list, as I mentioned earlier, is still in development. I am seeking feedback and you can email me, email me there at my email address, cvmiller at gmail.com. The wish list in more detail is available at this link. And this is a V6 only link. So if you're trying to get it to V4, send me an email and I'll send you the V4 domain name. <laughs> but I figured I would be safe with a V6 group that they would have V6 access. Any questions? Thank you very much, Craig. I think there's a little bit of a discussion going on on the chat if you want to have a look. And I also pasted there your link. I think that's the, that's the V6 link. Thank you. Um, Actually, that's the dual stack one, so that'll work. Oh, okay. Well, you very kindly sent me a dual stack one. I do have V6 at home, but yeah, not V6 only. Uh, so I agree that NAT64, uh, DNS64 uh, is also a transition service that, that uh, I believe is in the full document, but I didn't highlight in this slide deck.
think Eric he's uh, Eric Wink is asking on the top about MDNS. Bonjour. MDNS is a problem because it doesn't cross routers. MDNS is limited to the broadcast or multicast domain. Um, so MDNS is a great start and should be supported for those simple networks. But as soon as you add your second router, MDNS isn't going to work for uh, across the router boundary. 